Solving rail fence. Solving rail fence in software is easy. I have an example Python program on the Patreon page for those of you at the appropriate level. The main approach in software for rail fence is to attack all of the wits and offsets brute force and stop when you get the correct answer. There aren't that many wits or offsets to test, so you could just simply look at all of the outputs and pick the one that is correct. Alternatively, you could have a list of common two-letter, three-letter, and four-letter n-grams or words and count how many of those appear in each output. Then select the ones with the highest number of hits. Otherwise, whatever approach you decide to use is fine. As mentioned in the main video, with 88 widths and offsets, pencil and paper solving can be tedious. To make things a bit easier, you can pre-build the zigzag patterns on graph paper and run off as many copies as you want. Or you can use a pre-built spreadsheet. One approach for a spreadsheet is to pre-number the rail points on the zigzag so you know how long to make the pattern based on the length of your crypt. In your spreadsheet, if you create the numbering to be relative to the previous cell, that is B2 is equal to A1 plus 1, then you can adjust for offsets by starting numbering in the appropriate cell. Next, making sure you are using a pencil and not a pen, just write in the first 10 letters or so of the message. You'll need more letters as the number of rails increases. You should be able to tell pretty quickly if you have the right number of rails in offset. If the message looks garbled, erase it and go to the next offset. Then go to the next rail count. Normal rail fence, with the cipher message off by rows, while more common, is a bit trickier for using a template because the row lengths change based on the offset. Let's use the first practice cipher from the main video. W-I-E-S-T-R-I-L-E-O-K-S-H-C-R-E-F-H-D-I-K-N-C-A-S-S-R-T-U-O-E-N-G-S. -E -E the length is 34, and the black chamber routinely uses between 3 and 10 rails. Starting at 3 rails and an offset of 0, for pencil and paper, Create a three-wide fence on graph paper for roughly 50 letters, as a suggestion. Make copies. And on one copy, mark off 34 places, plus three extra for the offsets. Notice that the top row will have nine spaces, and the middle will have 17. The bottom will have eight, but we can ignore those. Write the first two letters of the crypt to the top row. Row 2 will start at letter 10 in the crypt, so count off 9 letters and write the next 2 or 3 onto the second row of the zigzag. Finally, row 3 will start with letter 27 of the crypt. Count off 26 letters and write the next 2 onto row 3. It should be pretty clear very quickly that we have the correct width and offset meaning the key is 3, 0. So row 1 starts at 1, is 9 letters long. Row 2 starts at 10, is 17 letters long. Row 3 starts at 27, is 8 letters long. For the first row, I'm writing down WI. For the second row, I'm writing down OKS. And for the third row, RT. Reading off the zigzag, we have work is T. Just finish off the rest of the message as if you were decrypting it normally. For practice crypt 2, we have 91 letters. We can do the same test as above for widths 3 and 4, but we're going to find that those are wrong. Let's jump immediately to 5 rails. Again, make a master zigzag on graph paper longer than you think you'll need, and make copies. On one copy, mark off 91 places, plus 5 for the offsets. 
Row 1 starts at 1 is 12 letters long. Row 2 starts at 13 is 23 letters long. Row 3 starts at 36 is 23 letters long. Row 4 starts at 59 is 22 letters long. Row 5 starts at 81 is 11 letters long. Fill in the first two or three letters as before. So the first line, IW. Second line, DKE. Third line, NCI. Fourth line, IOS. Fifth line, HN. This gives us I-D-N-I-H-O-C-K-W-E-I-S-N. It's garbage. Notice now, if we use an offset of one, we blank the first character on row one, making it one letter shorter. And row four grows by one. So row one starts at one is 11 letters long. Row two starts at 12 is 23 letters long. Row three starts at 35 is 23 letters long. Row four starts at 58 is 23 letters long. Row five starts at 81 and is 11 letters long. So the first line, we skip the first space and write I. Second line, ADK. Third line, INC. Fourth line, TIO. Fifth line, HN. Again, A-I-T-H-I-N-D-I-K-C-O-N. It's unreadable. When we go to offset two, row two becomes shorter by one and row five becomes longer by one. Again, we can ignore the length of row five. So row one is going to start at one and is 11 letters long. Row two starts at 12 and is 22 letters long now. Row three starts at 34 and is 23 letters long. Row four starts at 57 is 23 letters long. And row five starts at 80 and is 12 letters long. On the first line, again, we're skipping the first space and writing down I. Second line, we're skipping the first space and writing down AD. Third line, SIN. Fourth line, RTI. Fifth line, DH. We get SRD, TIAIDNIH. Again, garbled. We go to offset three. Row three shortens by one, and row four lengthens by one. Row one starts at one and is 11 letters long. Row two starts at 12 and is 22 letters long. Row three starts at 34, is 22 letters long. Row four starts at 56 and is 24 letters long. Row five starts at 80 and is 12 letters long. First line, first space is empty, we write I. Second line, first space is empty, we write AD. Third line, first space is empty, we write SI. Fourth line, we write FRT. Fifth line, we write DH. And we get FDR said I th And we have our key. With five, offset three, or five three. You can generally assume that the longer the message, the larger the number of rails, and the more likely an offset will be used. For the last practice cipher, we have two clues to guide us. First, since the order of crypts is from easiest to hardest, that there has to be something trickier about this one. Second, the title Parker Dorothy on Madarab has boredom reversed and Dorothy Parker reversed. The idea here is that it's a reversed rail fence. Our message was O-T-C-Y-R-T-B-T-U-H-O-H-R-E-R-R-E-E-D-E-I-I-O-C-M-S-O-N-I-U-S-O-S-C-C-R-U-U-I-R-R-E-I-E-T-F-O-F-S-O YRI. Jumping straight to four rails, it really doesn't matter how long the message is. We just need to write the cipher into the zigzag and check the rows for readability. So we write in the first few letters 
O-T-C-Y-R-T-B-T-U-H. Reading off the rows, we get O-B-T-T-T-C-R-U-Y-H. We can stop here because T-T-T is unlikely to be valid English. Going to offset one, we skip the first space and write in our message into zigzag. Reading off the top row, we can see space, T-H-E, O-R-B-O-R-E, T-Y, T-H-E-R, C-U-R. While it's actually easier to do the work for filling in the zigzag for reverse than for normal rail fence, the shortness of the top and bottom rails makes it harder to tell if we have the right width quickly because we have fewer characters appearing in the rows we take off. But if the text looks promising, we probably have the correct key and we'll need to keep going regardless just to get the full solution out. So the top line, space, T-H-E-C-U-R-E-F, dropping down the line two, O-R-B-O-R-E-D-O-M. So yes, this is readable English. If we write off the lines and reformat the spacing, we get the cure for boredom is curiosity. There is no cure for curiosity. That's enough for now. See you at the next drop point. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.